Now let us take one more situation and in this coming illustration we are going to discuss the concept of the angular impulse and application of the impulse momentum equation in case of the rigid body dynamics. So let us move to the next illustration. In this illustration it is given a solid ball of diameter d equal to 11 centimeter is rotating about its one of the horizontal diameter with the angular velocity omega naught equal to 120 radian per second. That is we are having a solid sphere of radius 11 centimeter and it is rotating with the angular velocity 120 radian per second right and it is released from height so that it fall h equal to 1.8 meter freely and then collide with the horizontal floor. That means at height 1.8 meter we release the ball, ball is rotating about it is a horizontal diameter and it collide with the horizontal floor. We are given the coefficient of restitution is 5 divided by 6 and coefficient of the friction between the ball and ground is mu equal to 0 0.2. We need to calculate the angular velocity of the ball after collision and distance between the points where the ball strike the floor first and second time and we need to use g equal to 10 meter per second square. Okay? So, let us make the diagrammatical representation of the problem. Here you can observe this ball is rotating with the angular velocity 120 radian per second. Let us take the sense of rotation as clockwise. Now it is released from height 1.8 meter and after falling freely it collide with the floor. Its angular velocity during the motion from initial to the final position will remain constant because there is no external torque acting on the ball which may change the angular velocity. That means angular velocity of the ball will be constant. The linear velocity of the center of mass will increase because acceleration due to gravity. Right? Now we can find the linear velocity or translational velocity of the ball by using the formula v naught is the velocity just before collision and this is given by root 2 gh. Right? We know the value of h equal to 1.8 meter and g equal to we need to use 10 meter per second square. So, it is root 2 multiplication 10 multiplication 1.8 and that is equal to 6 meter per second. That means just before collision of the ball with the ground, the velocity of the ball center of mass or velocity of the ball is 6 meter per second in the downward direction. Right? Now, what will happen? When ball collide with the floor, when ball collide with the floor, it exert normal reaction on the ball. Floor will exert normal reaction on the ball. And ball remain in contact with the floor for the short time. That means the reaction, the normal reaction between the ball and floor is impulsive in nature. Because of this normal reaction, which is impulsive, ball will rebound in the upward direction, right? But ball is rotating. That means the surface of the ball slide over the floor during contact, which is for the salt time. That means friction coming to existence, friction oppose the rotation or sliding of the ball. And because the normal reaction is the impulsive in nature, that means the frictional impulse will also impulsive in the nature. Right? This frictional impulse will act in the tangent direction and this tangential impulse or frictional impulse will retard the rotational velocity of the ball. That means we have the two impulse now acting on the ball, one in the horizontal direction, other is the vertical direction. Vertical impulse will provide the velocity of the ball in the vertical direction because of that impulse ball will rebound in the vertical upward direction and horizontal direction impulse will provide the ball velocity in the horizontal direction. That means just after collision, ball will have the two component of the velocity, one in the vertical direction, other is in the horizontal direction. 
and if any object moving under the gravity having the two component the velocity one horizontal other vertical that means the path of the ball just after collision is parabola that's why in the question we are asked to find the distance between the points where the ball is strike the first and second time because ball will follow the parabolic path after collision and we need to calculate the range this is the analysis of the problem so let us do one thing let us make the impulse diagram of the ball let us plot the ball again this is the situation just before collision and at the time of collision the impulse will act in the vertical up direction that is the impulse provided by ground on the ball this one this is the normal impulse right and we you know the rotation sense of the ball is in the clockwise sense that means this surface where the tip of the pen you can observe this is moving in the leftward direction that means friction will act in the rightward direction because the normal reaction is the impulsive that means the frictional impulse will act in the rightward direction and magnitude of this frictional impulse that is the horizontal direction that is equal to mu multiplied by jn because we write the frictional force in case of the sliding mu multiplied by normal reaction here we write frictional impulse as mu multiplied by normal impulse so this is the horizontal impulse this impulse will be responsible for providing the ball velocity in the horizontal direction and this impulse will provide the ball motion in the upward direction okay so let us make the velocity component of the ball in the horizontal and vertical direction this is the ball right and one more thing because this frictional impulse is acting on the ball because of this frictional impulse the angular velocity of the ball will change let this change angular velocity is omega right so horizontal component of the velocity just after collision will be vx and vertical component is vy this is vx this is unknown and we can find this component by using the newton restitution equation that is v y equal to e multiplied by v naught and we know the value of v naught and we also know the value of e e is equal to 5 divided by 6 right that means we can substitute this value and this value is 5 meter per second that means the vertical component of the velocity of the ball is 5 meter per second in upward direction and this is unknown velocity right and for getting this unknown velocity we can use the impulse momentum equation right so here we are going to learn application of the impulse momentum equation because this normal impulse reaction exerted by the floor is responsible for the change in linear momentum in the vertical direction right and we also know the frictional impulse that is equal to mu multiplied by jn if we calculate the value of jn we can find the value of j also right so let us move to calculate this value now let us apply the impulse momentum equation for application of this equation we need to specify our positive direction ball is moving just before collision in the vertical downward direction let us take vertical downward direction as positive so the linear momentum of the ball just before collision is mv naught this will be positive impulse acting in the upward direction and we have assumed vertical downward direction is positive that means j n direction should be negative so the decrease in the linear momentum of the ball at the time of collision is m v naught minus j n and ball will rebound in the upward direction and upward direction is positive that means we can write this equation that is m v naught minus j n equal to minus m v y vy in the upward direction and we know this value right and but we don't know the mass value and let us assume the mass of the ball as m so we can substitute the value of v naught that is 6 meter per second and vy is the 5 meter per second this one and through this equation we can find the vertical impulse that is jn jn equal to 
from this equation this is equal to 11 m newton second this is the vertical component of the impulse okay now let us move to calculate this value that is the horizontal impulse the horizontal impulse j is equal to mu multiplied by j n right we, we can observe here in this diagram now we know this value we know the value of mu that is 0 0.2 multiplication 11 m this is 2.2 m newton second right this is in the right forward direction now we can calculate the horizontal component of the velocity by using impulse momentum equation in translational motion we can we can observe here this horizontal impulse is responsible for this vx because initially we we not we are not having any linear momentum in the horizontal direction that means this impulse will provide the horizontal momentum that means we can write j h equal to m multiplied by v x right this equation we know the value of j x that is 2.2 m m is unknown v x can be calculated using this we can substitute this value right j h equal to 2.2 m at 2.2 m divided by m that is equal to 2.2 meter per second that means velocity of the ball just after collision in the horizontal direction is 2.2 meter per second so up to this point we have calculated the horizontal and vertical component of the velocity just after collision now let us move to calculate the angular velocity of the ball just after collision so let us assign the x axis y axis and z axis let us assume this plane that the plane of the screen is x y plane then z axis will be toward you like this right and we know the velocity in the horizontal direction is 2.2 meter per second and this j is equal to 2.2 m newton second right so we can assign the vector notation for the initial velocity we know the sense of rotation is the clockwise for calculating the direction we use the right hand rule we fold our finger right hand finger in the sense of rotation that is the clockwise so we can observe the thumb is into the screen that is minus z direction that means initial angular momentum of the ball just before collision is i omega naught minus k cap this is the initial angular momentum right now we can calculate the angular impulse we can observe here in this diagram zn is passing through the center of the ball that means it is not responsible for providing the angular impulse this impulse that is js that is a frictional impulse is along the surface of the ball and distance from the center of the ball is capital r that means this component is providing the angular impulse for the ball and magnitude of this angular impulse is jh multiplied by r and this angular impulse is responsible for retarding the angular velocity of the ball right so let us write the value of the magnitude of this angular impulse this is equal to j h multiplied by r right and vector sense if we want to specify this vector sense you can observe here from the center this is providing the anti clockwise sense of the rotation that means the direction of the angular impulse is plus k cap so this is plus k cap okay we got the value of the magnitude now we can assign the angular velocity let us this angular velocity is omega we don't know the sense of rotation of the ball just after collision it may be in the clockwise sense it may keep on rotating the clockwise sense or the sense of rotation may change after collision so this unknown is omega vector let us assume now we can write the angular momentum of the ball just after collision let this value is i omega and it is unknown so it is i omega vector and initial angular momentum is i omega naught minus k cap and this is the angular impulse that is r j h and direction was plus k cap so we can write the moment 
angular impulse equation like this that is the moment equation for this rotation that is equal to i omega naught minus k cap and rj plus k cap that is equal to i multiplied by omega vector this one we know it is a solid ball solid sphere so moment of inertia about the horizontal diameter should be 2 by 5 mr square 2 by 5 mr square here also now we can substitute the corresponding value we know j h equal to this is 2.2 m so these are the value after substitution we can observe here a small m a small m a small m will get cancelled this capital r capital r and capital r will also get cancelled from this equation we can find the value of omega this is equal to omega equal to this is uh, omega naught let us divide whole equation by 2 by 5 so this is equal to omega equal to omega naught minus 5 multiplied by 2.2 divided by 2r and vector direction is k cap right we have taken k cap as a common now we can substitute the value of omega naught and capital r this these are the value because we know diameter was 11 centimeter so radius is 11 divided by 2 centimeter 10 to the power minus 2 multiplied if we multiply this this will be in the meter so this value is 20 radian per second and direction vector is minus k cap and it is in the clockwise sense because minus k cap means clockwise sense that means ball just after collision it will start rotating with the lesser angular velocity that is 20 radian per second and we know it is having the horizontal and vertical component of the velocity that means as we discuss the path of the ball just after collision will be parabola right and we let us move to the problem part and here we need to calculate the distance between two point where ball is striking first and second after first and second collision so we know this is the projectile motion like this we need to calculate the range and we have the formula for the range that is capital r equal to 2 multiplied by u x multiplied by u y right this is the sense of rotation that will remain unchanged during flight that is the omega so this is the angular velocity we have calculated so let us write the horizontal range formula that is r equal to 2 vx vy these are the initial component of the velocity in the horizontal and vertical direction so these are the horizontal component and vertical component we can substitute here value and we can get the range values this will be 10 divided by 10 this will cancel this is 2.2 meter so ball will strike again after moving 2.2 meter in the horizontal direction so this is the required answer